Now 13 minutes past nine here on the Radio Whammer Breakfast. No, it's not Tuesday night on Prime TV. It's still Kiwi FM here, but that there is the um, theme music to Downton Abbey and a much-loved theme for um, anyone who uh, watches the show, I'm, I'm sure. We get a lot of um, lot of feedback about that um, uh, on Twitter and whatnot. People go, love the theme tune. Chris Philpot is along to talk about that very shortly. Chris Philpot at stuff.co.nz, the uh, on-the-box, on-the-radio slot here on Kiwi. G'day there, Chris. Hey, hey. Very I feel well. like I've got to talk with a posh accent now after <laughs> the do. theme music. You do. Oh, or, hello. Or, or, or you... Hello, Whammo. How are you this morning? Are you good? Well, I, I fancy <laughs> being the, the downstairs sort of person. So, yeah, yeah, good <laughs> good, good one, governor, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll play the upstairs person then. Yeah. <laughs> First up, though, let's talk about um, cord cutting. Now, this is a conversation that um, was sparked off a little bit earlier on this week around the TV channel... Uh, Soho on Sky TV, wasn't it? Yeah, well, cord cutting really it goes back sort of a two or three years now. Where it's this process where viewers are cutting the cord on their TV, essentially getting rid of uh, their live broadcast TV, their cable channels. I think it applies more to br- cable than to broadcast, but yeah. it's where people are foregoing television in favour of the internet. They're providing their own entertainment online and, and kind of going from there. Um, and it's, it's an interesting thing because we were talking about it in relation to Soho where the Soho channels come along all well and good on Sky, mm. but it's still highly delayed. The, the shows are all still weeks behind. We're five weeks behind on Boardwalk Empire, which started on Sunday night, for example. Uh, we're two years behind, I think, still on Rescue Me. And I, while the plan is to air episodes that have not aired in New Zealand yet, I think it still comes across as a pretty bad delay in the eyes of viewers. Um, yeah. What do you think of this cord cutting thing? Well, um, I, I mean, I consider myself, though, though, you know, and you were right saying that cord cutting really applies to America more than New Zealand. But I, I do consider myself to be a, um, an, a, 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 an early cord cutter in New Zealand, or, or at least trying to be a cord cutter here in New Zealand. And that I still have my TV, right? I've got my free view, but I don't subscribe to Sky, so I don't pay for broadcast TV. Um, and I don't have, don't have anything like a TiVo or anything. And I am now trying to consume much of my content through um, through the internet. And, and as we've already talked about in, in our um, What We Shouldn't Be Watching section, a lot of that is through illegal TV downloading and getting stuff at yeah. the same time as the States. Um, <clears throat> also, I have a, um, a Netflix account as well, which... Um, I don't know, it's a legal sort of grey area here in New Zealand because it's not here yet, but I am still paying for a service from the States to watch TV and movies on demand. Um, now, this, I mean, this, as you say, this came around because of a conversation around Soho where you had a comment on your blog where someone said, oh, look, it looks like a great channel, but I'm not prepared to pay for it. I don't want to give Sky my hard-earned money. And... Um, yeah. I think you disagree with that comment. I'll, I'll, I'll give my reason why I think I agree with that comment. Um, firstly, because I don't want to pay for the um, Sky standard subscription. I don't want all that other rubbish that comes along with Sky. I don't, I don't watch it. I, I, I barely watch um, TV as it is. I watch the news, stuff like that. But I, you know, I don't want to sit back and, and watch all the ads and everything else that comes with it. Um, yeah. So I, I would quite happily pay for a channel that was somehow served to me either over the internet or through a set-top box like an Xbox or something like that. That was Soho, and that was $10 a month, but I don't want to pay the 70 or whatever it is, $60 basic subscription. That's yeah, my first it ends, up being a, it ends up being a $50 or more subscription per month, and I can understand that. I think Sky TV needs to change their model so that you can subscribe to individual channels. Mm-hmm. Um, in which case I would probably only have Soho and maybe Sport. Um, but I think the cord-cutting thing more is about the cable in America. I think the main reason why it's probably a bad practice, and this is a lot of the reason why I think uh, TV broadcasters in America are taking note and cable broadcasters, is because they rely on that subscription money to make the shows. So, you know, we can all be all very well, okay, well, I'm going to, 
cancel Sky and Soho and I'm just going to download Boardwalk Empire. But Boardwalk Empire requires that subscription money to be produced. Okay. And I think that's where the cord cutting methodology actually falls. Well, what if the producers, um, along with uh, consumers and fans, found a way of funding these future projects through um, through the internet, through people subscribing to that particular show through the internet? Well, I think this is where I think cord cutting is just it's it is this uh, alternative because there is no other way of acquiring the shows. If, if there was a more immediate um, a way of acquiring the latest episodes of, say, Boardwalk Empire, which I'm just using as an example, it's not for yeah. any other reason, but um, if there was a quicker way of getting it, say, here in New Zealand, if we could legally acquire the show for $10 a month or something like that, I think people would do it. And cord cutting is is people saying, listen, this is what we're doing because there is no alternative method. Mm. We want this alternative way of getting it. We want to be able to see the shows we want without you know, being tied into all of these other things, it's kind of vertical integration almost, which yeah. they were talking about on 30 Rock last night, where, you know, you can get Soho, that's fine, but you've got to also get all of these other channels and they cost money themselves as well. That's not fair on the consumer, I don't think. And yeah. that's why cord cutting is becoming an alternative. But in the long term, I think finding that alternative is going to be the way because cord cutting isn't financially feasible for the network. No, well, not for any of the networks, for the production companies. Well, do you think cord cutters might want to see those networks eventually dissolve and disappear and, and we find new business models as we as we go well, forward? Well, that could be another way of doing it where producers are, are getting money and producing shows and delivering them straight to consumers without the middleman. Yeah, because um, essentially that's that what they are. Isn't, isn't, isn't Sky just clicking the ticket on shows like... Um, Bullwark Empire, The Wire, Treme, all these yeah. great shows. They, they, the only reason why they are around is because they saw that people were illegally downloading these shows in New Zealand and they thought, ah, we can get a cut on this. There's obviously some kind of demand because the download showed there was demand. We didn't show the initiative, first of all, years ago when these shows yeah. were first coming out. Um, so now, now we're going to click the ticket. And, 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 yeah. and, and they want to say that anyone who's getting the show any other way is, um, is a criminal. Well, certainly Sky and, and in, the, in America, AMC and HBO, they're middlemen. They're delivery people um, who are taking this content that's being produced and giving it to consumers. But that's the way the model works. I don't think there's another more efficient way of doing it. You know, you look at a show like, um, I mean, this is a very basic example, but something like The Guild, which is an online web series, one of the most popular in the world has a relatively low number of viewers, only because they kind of make the show and then put it on their website and people can go and get it as they wish. Yeah. Um, and that I don't think that's necessarily a good model either in 2011. It, I, I often wonder if we're, it's just that we're in this middle time where we're between you know, the traditional broadcast methods and new broadcast methods, and there's just this awkward kind of puberty that we're going through now for yeah. TV, uh, TV show delivery. And... Uh, you know, for getting shows to consumers from producers. Um, a new model definitely is going to come along, and I think cord cutting will fade at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are into this immediate, uh, intermediary stage. I think I think that's absolutely right. Um, and, yeah. and I think we'll probably talk about this again in the future, but I think we should move on to Downton Abbey Series 2, Chris. Yeah, Downton Abbey, it's a weird one. Uh, the You know, the British show about the Granthams living in their grand house, and it equally is about the people downstairs, their staff and their servants that work for them. This is the second series. It's airing on Prime on Thursdays, and I know you've seen ahead uh, through not very <laughs> legal means. means yes. um, but it, it's it's not as good as the first series, and I think this is what people are afraid to say it. It's not as good. Um, and what happens is, like I put out on Twitter, I said, you know, the truth is Downton Abbey Series 2 is not as good as the first series. And I got an equal number of people saying, you're out of your mind. And other <laughs> people saying, finally, someone has said it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and called it. But I was thinking about this because I wrote about it for today's blog, which you can find at stuff.co.nz. And, and I was thinking about it, and I wonder if it isn't just to do with... Um, with expectations. Mm. I think disappointment and expectation kind of go hand in hand where, um, you know, Thomas Fuller, I quoted him, a 17th century historian, said, good is not good if better is expected. And um, the show is probably as good as it was in Series 1, but it seems worse because it's not as good as Series 1. 
and there's kind of because there's a little gap it seems like a huge gap um, because it's not as good as we were expecting and <clears> I think that's what's happened to Downton series 2 what do you think you're yeah. a few episodes ahead I, I'm a few episodes ahead oh, well I just finished um, the series last night um, and, and to quote Helen Clark maybe a victim of its own success perhaps uh, and that and that it, I, it was a runaway hit and it was a surprise hit and I don't think the producers knew how much of a hit it was going to be and so then they were told oh you've got to get series 2 out do you think maybe that the whole process was rushed and not only in the production of it because um, if you head along to The Guardian, there's some great articles about there showing um, like TV aerials and things that shouldn't have been in, in that um, period of time. Plus also the, the writing itself is very rushed. Um, uh, to watch the whole series is to fly through years of their lives and then yeah. also to suspend bel- um, disbelief about how people look over time as well. I think there's one character, one of the downstairs characters, I forget all their names, I'm not very good with names, but she was always young. She looked like a 14-year-old, and then five years later she still looks young and acts like a 14-year-old. So, um, yeah, there, there's a few holes to be poked in it. In it. But I still well, enjoy it's, it. It's kind of the opposite of Lost, isn't it, where on Downton the characters age sort of six or seven years through the course of the two series, but they only age a year in, the, in real life, where on Lost we had Walt, who aged sort of six years but on the show he'd only aged 90 days and they yeah. couldn't use him by the end of the series um, <laughs> yeah. because he was so much older than, than his character yeah. um, and you know those things you know TV aerials showing up I haven't gone too much into that I try and avoid reading other people's reviews of shows so that I don't end up imitating but um, I, I can understand why that would be we were talking off air about this you know with music bands have that sophomore slump where the second album doesn't live up to the first yeah. and the reason is it's generally because it's rushed and they use offcuts from the first album they just rework songs that weren't good enough to be included on the first one so they get put on the second one just so they can get something out there quickly and i wonder if that's kind of happened with downton where they've kind of just rushed into it and said this was a hit let's get straight into the second series they added in the first world war which is a big thing to add into a show and mm-hmm. i think they've really done a bad job of integrating it with the main series plot lines um, turning Downton into a convalescent home may be a good idea, and, I don't know. And, and, but, and, well, I was going to say, and also things that you really cared about in season one, like particular relationships between characters, yeah. you don't care about well, so much in season two because of the, the treatment of them. Yeah, well, that's right. And you've got you know Mary and Matthew, who are now apart through four episodes of the second series, um, Anna and Mr. Bates, which was one of the lovely subplots in the first series. Mm. Um, and then in the first episode of the series, they send Mr. Bates off to oblivion for all I know he just disappears for two episodes um, and obviously he came back last night but the damage is done there I'm, yeah. I've gone off Anna and Mr Bates now I don't care about them anymore um, and they just have replaced them with these soapy elements um, you know Thomas and Mrs O'Brien what is wrong with those people yeah. Why are they so mean I don't know why <laughs> they're being mean Nothing. Ha- no one did anything to them I'll tell you what you um know? Uh, towards, towards the end of the series, you, you should have very low expectations, and then maybe your expectations might be um, exceeded, perhaps. Uh, oh, but, my, but my expectation is that someone will just shoot Thomas in the leg and he'll leave. <laughs> that, I, that would be the only way that I would ever find his character enjoyable, as if he's limping off screen yeah. for good. I tell you what, in saying all that, I still, I still, still love the characters, and I will be back for series three. Oh, definitely. It, it's. You know, Series 2 is not as good as Series 1, but we're talking about Series 1 being a 10 out of 10 and Series 2 being you know, an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10. It's still brilliant yeah. television. Yeah. Um, and it's semantics talking about whether it's good or not, but it seems disappointing, and I think that's just because it hasn't met the expectation placed on it, perhaps. Indeed. Okay, well, what is coming up on New Zealand TV this week, Chris? Well, prime tomorrow night, 9.30, is the finale of Torchwood Miracle Day, uh, which ended months ago overseas. Um, and I think most people who are interested probably have watched it already. But uh, the finale is tomorrow night. It's an interesting conclusion to the show. I'll be writing about it for Friday's blog. Um, I don't know if it will meet everyone's expectation, but it's certainly interesting, even though there's a really, really bad twist at the end. Uh, the Jono Project is on Friday nights on TV3. There's two episodes to go. Um, and then Shameless on Monday nights on TV2 at 11 p.m. This is a remake of the British show. Uh, stars William H. Macy as Frank Gallagher, who's an alcoholic dad of six, a uh, single dad, and he basically spends his time drunk and leaves the kids to fend for themselves. Um, it's a half comedy, half drama. It's made by Showtime. So uh, 
it's similar in tone to the likes of Nurse Jackie or United States of Tara or The Big C, mm. uh, which are similar shows tonally. While all of those are about women, this one kind of focuses on the man. Um, and, it, and it's a very interesting dramedy, I think is the word you would use <laughs> to describe it. It's half drama, half comedy, but cool. it's good. And perhaps next, next week we might um, talk about Torchwood. Well, yeah, we'll talk, we're definitely we could get into a bit of that. It's, I'd be interested to see if it comes back for a, four, for a fifth mm. series. Mm. Indeed. Mm. Well, um, that <laughs> was uh, On The Box on the radio. Check out the On The Box blog up at stuff.co.nz in the um, entertainment section there. There's sometimes a link from the front page there as well. And uh, Chris Philpot on Twitter, twitter.com forward, forward slash Chris Philpot NZ. Let's go on um, out with a little bit more of this, eh? Thanks, Chris. No worries. Well, I'm all the best.